All right, guys, so pretty exciting. We are basically completing our last unit now. Everything that we are doing is preparing us for Algebra 1 Honors next year. So we just wrapped up Systems of Linear Equations. If you have not yet taken the quiz on eCampus, you need to go do that. Um, but we're just going to get right into it. So the notes for this week, none of them are too um, honestly difficult or lengthy. Um, systems of linear equations is much more challenging, so that can either be a good thing for you or maybe you wanted more of a challenge, and if that's the case, then I can always provide you more challenging work. Um, we're on page 70 in our notebook, and the title is Exponents, Standard 8EE 1.1, and Monday, May 11th, yesterday was Mother's Day, so we're just going to get started. Um, first, let's just write one half to the fifth, okay? So this is not your guys' first time seeing exponents. I know that for sure. Um, but we want to make sure that you guys know the proper vocabulary to use when we're discussing exponents. So... This five is obviously called the exponent, okay? Exponent. And what does exponent mean? When I look at that, it just doesn't look like it's spelled right, but I know it is. What does exponent mean? Exponent is the number of times that the base is used as, that's an ugly S, as a factor. So that's the fancy definition, the number of times that the base, the one half is used as a factor. So we are gonna multiply one half by itself five times. One half, I'll just circle it, one half is obviously called the base, or you can also call it the common factor. Um, common factor. So base or common factor. And then this term as a whole, whole thing, one half to the fifth, that is called power, which is just the product. And we know product means multiply. So product of repeated factors. So this is all fancy math academic vocabulary, but basically what this means, we have one half, that's our base, okay? One half is to the fifth exponent. So we're gonna multiply one half by itself five times. We're not actually gonna solve that problem though. Now, so the first problems we're gonna say write each product using exponents. Write each product using exponents. So, example A. We have negative seven times negative seven times negative seven, okay? So we are gonna try to change this, and you know, that's kind of obnoxious to write this out three times when you can just use the base and the exponent. So the base is what's in parentheses, so it's negative seven. And then the exponent is how many times do we multiply it by itself? Three. So negative seven to the third. 
So we're kind of, um, we have the expanded form and we're compressing it. And then in the next examples, we're gonna take the compressed form and expand it and solve it. So example B, let's say we have pi times pi times w times w times w times r. So you look at each term that's being multiplied by itself. So first we have pi. How many times was pi multiplied by itself? Twice. So pi to the second power, pi squared. How many times was w multiplied by itself? One, two, three times. So w cubed, or w to the third. r was just by itself. So you can have an invisible one up there. You don't have to write it. If we don't write it, it's just an invisible one. So r is there one time. W is three times, pi is twice. Okay, now the next two, we're gonna have to compare um, the parentheses and where the negative sign is. So let's say, let me see, C and D, and then we'll move on to the next style. So C, negative four. Why don't we throw in some X's for multiplying? Negative four negative four, negative four. And then D, we're gonna have the negative sign out front, and then we're gonna do four times four, times four, times four. So, these might look the same, but they're different because C has negatives in all the parentheses, whereas D, has a positive four in the parentheses being multiplied by itself with a negative out front. So negative four is being multiplied by itself four times. So that means negative four is our base. It's our common factor. So negative four, and then how many times was negative four used as a common factor? How many times was it multiplied by itself? One, two, three, four. So negative four to the fourth power is just negative four times itself four times, okay? Whereas D, we have what's being multiplied by itself each time? A positive four, so the base is a positive four and it was multiplied by itself four times. Now we're gonna put that negative out front. You could put the four in parentheses to remind yourself, hey, this is four to the fourth power, then times a negative. I'm about to sneeze. Or you don't need the parentheses. Oh my goodness, come on, sneeze. Achoo. God bless me. Okay, so the parentheses are optional, but if you're gonna use the parentheses here, you have to know that the negative sign is out front because Four is being multiplied by itself four times and then negative. So that's the right answer. Or you can just put four to the fourth with the negative. If the negative is not in the parentheses, then it's not part of the base. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the types of problems you're actually gonna see on Khan Academy. Um, what color am I feeling? I was feeling red, but I can't really find it. There it is, okay. So now we're gonna actually use the compressed form and solve it. We're gonna evaluate each expression. So we know expressions don't have equal signs. It's not an equation. Evaluate each expression. Okay, so we'll have Example A for these directions is going to be negative 4 to the fourth. All right, so what that means, negative 4 is our base. So this is going to be negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. So we used our base, negative 4, 
and we multiplied it by itself four times. Okay, so without even using your calculator, is this answer going to be a positive or a negative answer? What do you think? Okay, hopefully you realize it's going to be positive. Um, the trick is if you're multiplying a negative by itself an even number of times. So we're multiplying negative numbers an even number of times because there's four and four is even. So if you multiply a negative by itself an even number, it's going to be a positive answer. If you don't know that trick, then just look. Negative times negative is positive. Times a negative is negative. Times a negative is positive. Okay? Then you can use your calculator or you can use your head. So you could do literally negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 and get a positive 256. Or I'll teach you the exponent button. So it's this button right here above the division sign y to the x. So y is our base, it's going to be negative 4, and x is going to be the exponent 4. So what we do is we do negative 4, so you type in your base. And then you do, you push the button, y to the x, and now you type in your exponent. So negative 4 to the 4th equals 256. Okay, but now let's say we're going to do the other type of example where it's negative 4 to the 4th. So what you have to know is this negative is not part of the base. It is not in the parentheses. So this negative is technically outside of parentheses, okay? It's not included until the end. The base is just 4. I like if... When I was learning this, I would, if there wasn't the parentheses around it, I would put the parentheses to exclude it so I wouldn't forget. So, 4 is the base, and we're multiplying it by itself 4 times. Okay, so we know that 4 times itself 4 times, so 4 to the 4th, positive 4, to the fourth power is 256. But don't forget that there's still that negative sign out front. So negative times the 256, so it's kind of like a negative one times 256 is a negative 256 for our answer. So that's a big difference. When the negative was included as the base, it was positive. But when it was out front, the answer was a negative. Okay, let's say we have example C. We're going to do um, negative 5 thirds to the, hmm, what do I want? seventh because why not okay so our base what is our base what is our common factor it's whatever's in parentheses okay so negative five-thirds and it's being multiplied by itself seven times negative five-thirds times negative five-thirds times negative five-thirds why did I pick such a big exponent times negative five-thirds 1, 2, 3, 4, times negative 5 thirds, times negative 5 thirds, times negative 5 thirds. My nephew, he's um, in third grade, and right now he is obsessed with powers of 2. So like with the exponent being uh, squared, but he is literally has this whole sheet of paper, and he will have powers of 2 at the top, and it'll be 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and he has it going all the way down to 32 and he literally has them memorized. I'm not joking, he's obsessed. So it'll be like 32 times 32. And he has all of them memorized. I'm like, oh my goodness, you're amazing. Um, so negative 5 thirds to the seventh. So negative 5 thirds is the base and we do it seven times. Multiply it, product, multiply it by itself seven times. 
Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Okay. So, um, right off the bat, it's an odd number, guys. We're multiplying a negative number by itself an odd number of times. So, if it's an odd number of negatives, it's going to be a negative answer. Now, let's try it in our calculator. You could literally do negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, blah, blah, blah. And then do 3 times 3 times 3. Or you could do negative 5 thirds times negative 5 thirds seven times. Super obnoxious. But you can do that. If you're not calculator with, if you don't have um, your own calculator or my phone's in the other room. But if you turn your phone sideways, um, there is um, an exponent button on there. I feel like I probably should have shown you that since we're at home. But anyway, negative 5 thirds, 5 ABC 3, negative. So negative 5 thirds to the 7th. So to the 7th power. Now, the only problem with this is the calculator leaves it as an ugly decimal. I'm not a fan of this. I'd rather leave it as an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one. So yes, this is the answer, but I'm actually going to do it um, the obnoxious way because I didn't think about that ahead of time. So even if you have a phone calculator, you can do this. So negative five thirds times, oh my goodness, this is going to take forever. Negative five thirds, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my goodness, I'm so stupid. Oh my goodness, I did the same. Why did I not realize it was, oh, goodness, Miss Fry. Okay, we're just going to multiply the numerators. So negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five times, yeah, you get it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, seven. Oh, you guys are probably, this is, I feel like just a really bad teacher right now. So yeah, you literally could multiply negative five by itself seven times, or you could have really smart would have just been negative five to the seventh power. And then I wouldn't have had to multiply it by itself seven times. Okay, so negative 78,125 for the numerator. Now, the denominator, we're going to multiply three by itself seven times. So you could do three times three times three, or just three to the seventh power equals 2,187. Now, you could leave it. Why do I feel like this got blurry? Okay. You could leave it like this, um, or you can always type it in your calculator. So 78,125 ABC button, 2,187. Oh, see, it's too big for the calculator. So we're just going to leave it like this. Now you could check it and actually divide the top by the bottom, the numerator by the denominator, and it is the same answer that we got originally. For the next one, I'm not going to do such a big exponent because I learned my lesson. Um, but we're going to do an improper fraction. So negative 3 to the, and 2 thirds is the base, and then the exponent is going to be 3. So when you have an improper fraction, first you have to change it. Um, I mean, when you have, um, what's it called? A mixed number. First, you have to change it to an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one. So remember how you do that is you do three. So you do the denominator times the whole number. So three times a negative three is negative nine. No, don't worry about the negative. Do the negative last. So three times three is nine plus 2 is 11. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So that's 11 over, and then you put it over the denominator, 3. And then bring that negative out front. So 
negative 11 thirds to the third. So that's negative 11 thirds times negative 11 thirds times negative 11 thirds. Um, you could type it in your calculator, but I believe it's going to be a decimal. Yep, and we don't want that. We want it to be left as a fraction. So then what you do is you do negative 11 times itself three times. So you could do negative 11 times negative 11 times negative 11, or that's just the same as negative 11 to the third power, because it's timesing itself by three times. So negative 1,331 over three times three times three, or three to the third power is 27. All right, we're gonna do two more examples. I'm gonna make this one up. Um, let's do negative two thirds to the fourth. So that's negative two thirds times negative two thirds times negative two thirds times negative two thirds. Okay, pause the video and try this one on your own. Pause the video and make sure, is it gonna be positive or negative? Leave it as a fraction. So don't just type it in your calculator as two thirds negative to the fourth. You can do that, but it's gonna be a decimal and we don't want that. We want it left as a fraction. Okay, so we know that we're multiplying a negative by itself an even number of times, so it's gonna be a positive answer. So first I'm gonna do negative two times itself four times. I don't even need the calculator. Negative two times negative two is four times negative two is negative eight times negative two is a positive 16. And you can check it, negative two to the fourth power times itself four times is a positive 16. Three times three is nine times three is 27, times three is 81 maybe? Let's check. So three to the fourth power, yep, 81. So that answers 16 over 81, which is super fun because next week we're getting into square roots and just a little sneak preview is, so this is the answer, but if you took the square root of each one, that means what number times itself those aren't clean. Are you yeah, I'm recording. So, hey, I'm recording. So if you take the square root of 16, what number times itself is 16? Four, four times four is 16. And then if you take the square root of 81, what number times itself is 81? Nine, we're gonna get into stuff like that next week. So nine times nine is 81, four times four is 16. But this answer was 16 over 81. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, let's do the last one. Okay, try this one on your own. Um, we're gonna do negative, um, hmm, one and four ninths to the second power, okay? So right off the bat, this negative is not in parentheses. So I would immediately rewrite it with the negative sign out front of the parentheses so I just don't forget. So the one and four ninths is the base and we're squaring it. But when you have um, um, a mixed number, you have to change it to an improper fraction first. So, nine times one is nine. Oops, nine times one is nine plus four. Nine times one is nine plus four. 10, 11, 12, 
13, yeah. So 13, and you leave it over the 9. Why is my red pen not writing right there? There we go. 9 times 1 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you add that. So then 13 over 9 to the second negative. So first we just put the parentheses around it to remember that the negative sign is not being squared. Then we change the mixed number to an improper fraction where you leave the denominator, 9 is the denominator, and then 9 times 1 is 9, plus the numerator, 13. Okay, so now we have, that's the same as negative is out front. So 13 over 9 times 13 over 9. Equals negative out front. 13 times 13, or 13 squared, so 13 times 13, or 13 squared. You literally can do 13 times 13 and get 169. Or you can do 13 to the second power, 169. Or you can just do the original squared button and get 169, okay? 9 times 9 is 81. Oh, this is another fun one, okay. Sorry, I'm thinking of square roots. All right, so the negative sign is out front. So that means we have to multiply it. That's the last step. Equals negative 169 over 81. And that's your answer. Just leave it like that. Technically, you could type it in your calculator and be like, hey, oops, not that button. And be like, hey, where's the ABC button? Does this simplify? Yeah, it does, to negative 2 and 7 over 81. Just leave it as an improper fraction. We're fine with that. That's cool. Um, you'll see it left like that all the time. So these notes are actually easier, I mean harder, than your Khan Academy assignments. But just so you know, you have two Khan Academy assignments that go along with this. Um, one of them is just going to be solving problems where they're... I think like whole numbers and the other one is when they're fractions. Um, but you, you guys will see that on eCampus in Khan Academy. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.